What's up, Game of Thrones wait, wait, fans? Wait, wait. Oh, oh, sorry, I really get you there. Okay. What's up, Game of Thrones fans? Welcome back. We're going to review episode two called Home, season six. Let's go. Roll titles. So, yes, Jon Snow is alive. Mm -hmm. So much happened in this episode. We got Bran back, we got Mira back, Hodor back. They showed a flashback, Winterfell. What else was there? I think Jon Snow's alive. I don't know. Oh, and Roose died, and Fat Walder died, and a baby died. The, the whole episode was really full of tension, just gripping TV. Yeah, I totally retract my um, 9 out of 10 from last week. Okay, well, what, what are you going to give last week now? Like, Six. This one's a ten. <laughs> 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 ah, my hair! <laughs> Sorry. You should have worn a higher top. Anyway, here we go. So we open up with Bran, and he is uh, having some sort of vision with the Three Eyed Raven, Brynden Rivers, the uh, Blood Raven. And we get Winterfell uh, back when Ned was a kid, and Ned is training with Benjen. The, one of the most important things that this introduced. Us too was Lyanna, who is uh, Ned Stark's younger sister. So hopefully we get more answers, but I think that Lyanna is going to be more of a prominent theme running through this. And I hope that Rhaegar is too. Rhaegar is the guy who kidnapped her, apparently, from Robert Baratheon. So I hopefully that there'll be a running theme, Rhaegar and Lyanna, hopefully pushing towards the fact that they're Jon Snow's parents, which we think we think is true. Yeah, and now Jon Snow's alive, there's more reason for it. Exactly. Isn't there, so. for, for, it, for it to be a prominent theme. Another big thing is that we get Benjen in this scene. Ned goes up to him and he's like, The frig? Keep Calm your shield up. I'll ring it like a bell. Which is like a, a nice throwback to when uh, John said that to Ollie. It kind of makes me think that we might see Benjen later in the season. I don't know, they, they pushed <coughs> it at the end of last season when you know they lied about Benjen coming to the wall. They, they're pushing it again this season that yeah. Benjen's been in. And he was a prominent feature in this scene. So I yeah, just there'd be no reason wonder. to be there, would there? Got a young Hodor as well. That's cool. There's some sort of underlying mystery there yeah. as to why, why he, he can't speak. And I wonder if he's got some sort of secret or there's obviously some sort of post-traumatic stress that brought on that Hodor and wonder whether or not he'll be able to reveal a secret. It's good that it showed Lyanna being like a badass and she was like riding on a horse. It kind of adds to the idea that Rhaegar wouldn't be able to kidnap her because she looked like she was kind of able to handle herself. Yeah. So it kind of plays into the fact that they actually elope. Get um, a shot of this freaky little creature. What is that? But what is that? Child. What is that? What but, um, is that? I can't be asked to get into too much lore. Yeah, but yeah, so we know who the children of the forest are. Yeah. They're obviously working together. That's with... for another video. But I think for the meantime, we'll be seeing a lot of uh, really cool visions. And it'll be a great way to sort of unravel the past and unravel some mysteries. Then we finally get back to Castle Black and we get the impending scene of the Night's Watch brothers who betrayed John, trying to get his body and trying to get Davos out of the room. It was incredibly tense and it's just heightened my love for Davos. I'm fucking sweating, I'm gonna take this off. <laughs> you seen your armpits and chest? I don't care. And you might get some haters. <laughs> then eventually the wilding show up and uh, it's kind of like a, an, an, an anti-climax against the giant. I was half expecting a battle. Yeah, and then they just sort of all stand there and all the Night's Watchmen kind of put down their arms and it makes you think how yeah. how much they were on Thorn's side to begin with. They just kind of follow wherever they feel is safest. When the Wildlings turn up and they've got a woman, it'll be interesting to see the fallout after Jon Snow's resurrection and how many people are willing to sort of follow him when he does eventually go south. And I think a lot of them don't agree with what he done killing Jon Snow. Well, they're doing their duty by following him, but they didn't want to actually follow him. One of the most intriguing things will be to see how Jon Snow reacts with Alistair Thorne when he comes back. <laughs> There's never been a vengeful guy. No, and just put out there, don't you want Ollie to die? He's just a kid. He's a shit. kid. He's seen too much horror and, you know, his family been killed by the wildlings. He thought he was doing the right thing. As well, you've got to understand that he was manipulated by the other guys in the night's watch. Oh, I understand. I'm just saying. <laughs> Tormund sees Jon Snow's body and he's like, a lot of nerves. Then we get a scene of some guy talking some shit about Cersei. You got you got the sense of the whole scene that something's gonna happen here. Needless to say, a few seconds later he goes for a piss, he turns around and pisses, <laughs> you love piss, didn't you? pisses on the mountain and then he just smashes his head into the wall. I think it was supposed to be kind of funny, but also at the same time just showing that this guy's means business. Just a fucking maniac. Which segues into Cersei doing some knitting. I don't think she was knitting. She it's like this one just pulled up his string out of her. Like dress. She's not knitting, she just goes. Maybe that means something. We'll come back to that in a later video. She wants to go to Marcella's funeral, and the guys are like, huh, you can't go. The mountains like, mm. and then they're like, you can't go. It's all very tense. It's, it was a very tense episode, you know, a lot of tension. That's what tense means. The scene of Tom and 
uh, trying to act a little bit less like a bitch this season. And he's going to look to pitch himself against the High Sparrow, but I get a funny feeling that the High Sparrow might spin that round and been able to manipulate him against his mum. I like Tommen. Yeah, he seems like he would genuinely be a good ruler. Yeah. Given the time and the experience, I feel like he could do a good job, but I think he's just caught between... The fucked up relationship between yeah. Jamie and Cersei and the High Sparrow. It's just not going to end well for him no. this year. He acts like a bitch, acts like a bitch, acts like a bitch, acts mm -hmm. like a bitch. I feel you, bro. The music in the whole episode as well was really kind of on edge. The, the whole episode was like... There was an undercurrent of like tension and stress. And we get this lovely scene. Lovely. Tommen just trying to do his duty and just wants to help his mum, but he has no idea. You know, this kid's supposed to be sort of 12, 13 years old and he has no idea what to do. It was really sad. Do you say that Tommen's gonna die? Well, the prophecy is that someone's going to die. Yeah, so she She's, might even kill him. We've discussed that before, that she might even bring about this prophecy. And that'll be the sort of the final, the nail in the coffin in terms of her sanity. Top-notch banter coming from Marine this year. Tyrion and Varys just throwing out, like, penis jokes. It's all good. Another really tense, dark scene with Tyrion and with the dragons. He took yeah. the thing off, and then and I was like... He fitted around way too long, and I, I was just like, get on with it. <laughs> Tyrion has got a lot of knowledge about dragons, and that can actually to some extent kind of tame the, those dragons. They're fucking big. Like these ones, these ones have been locked up. So it says they stunt their growth if they're locked up. They're kind of pushing Tyrion as a little bit of a Targaryen. We always thought anyway. We thought, because we're cool. And then we get Arya getting smacked about like a bitch. <laughs> a little bit. Just say that again. Smacked about no, like no, a bitch. I mean, just say something else. Smacked about like a bitch. She finally is kind of forgiven by Jack and Hagar. She'll always be Arya though, won't she? Exactly. Like, so she'll ever. I think that the process of this story this season is for her to get back to Arya, see if she can absolutely be no one, and I think she'll almost get to being no one, and then sort of season episode 7, 8 or 9, she will eventually say, no, nah. she's going to go back, she'll get Needle, she'll board a ship and be like... <laughs> and then we finally come to the uh, scene with Roos and Ramsay. So the Carl Starks have sided with the Boltons. Back in season 3, Rob Stark cut off uh, Lord Carl Stark's head, and he's understandably pissed off. They're talking about chasing Sansa up to the Castle Black and to kill Jon Snow. I think Bruce tries to make Ramsay realise that this is a bad idea. Killing the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch will unite the houses against them. Documental! Mm -hmm. Sit the fuck down. I think actually that the interesting thing is, is that probably most of the North is going to be against Jon Snow if he does come south um, because of the fact that he let all the wildlings through. Oh, yeah. I think now that Bruce is stabbed which was a shock, by the way. I wasn't expecting it this early in no, the season. No, I wasn't. They just kind of got him and I was like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Yeah, I was like... Oh. <laughs> a lot of the plot is going to be building up to that battle at the end of the season, which everybody knows is coming. Uh -huh. And now that Jon Snow's back, it looks like he's going to lead it with Sansa. So, Ramsay then decides, hmm, not quite content with just killing my dad for today. Let's go and kill the baby. Ramsay just stands there just like, you know... It just shows how nasty he is. It's exactly what he's a bit of a bastard I don't think he's happy about it he, I don't th I genuinely don't think that he wanted to do that but he's just been given no choice I think you know he's well, out well, of the fold they didn't have to set, set, all the, set the dogs on them did they oh, the same way. thing I, I see it <clears throat> don't sorry yeah, I, uh, it's not bothering me. Why is it bothering you? You know he likes to feed the dogs like he doesn't want to waste good meat. Yeah, she's a lot of good meat. This is true. Yeah. She's she's one f ha, mother, mother. You can't put that in either. Okay, sorry. She is a juicy piece of meat. Sansa's still going north, and I just cannot wait, now that Jon Snow is alive, to see if they meet. Because mm. it would be the first Stark reunion since... They've never had a reunion. <laughs> no, I was going to say... So there was a lot of family killing, mm -hmm. uh, kin slaying in this uh, episode. And then we introduced Euron to come back to the Iron Islands for the first time in a long time and um, he then flips Balon over the bridge. I think he might contest for the new baddie, but there's a lot of big stuff coming with the Raiders this year. So I don't think not only would there won't be just a story in isolation themselves, but there'll be a story that's going to have a big effect on Westeros. I, that's why I, I wish went uh, like that. I don't know why I did that. I was like, uh, but they're setting up to... Uh. Stop, like, with your arms. And then we get a shot of uh, with, with Yara, with the, with the drowned priest, and they're saying, you know, she, that she wants to be uh, queen or king, uh, uh, not king, because she can't be king, but... Uh, What's in that? I don't know. <laughs> we finally come to the final scene. Davos confronts Melisandre and basically says, Could you, uh... Could you stop me, 
Yeah, which was kind of strange because they hadn't touched on this. They'd never mentioned resurrection. They hadn't suggested bringing Jon Snow back. Never once did uh, Melisandre go, well, I could do this. But obviously she was depressed. She's in her yeah. little funk she can't get out of. I think that before Jon Snow died, I think Davos saw something special. I think that he may have done it also maybe to spark Melisandre back into life. Mm. He kind of feels that she has a big part to play in whatever they want to do in the future. It's going to not only unify the Night's Watch and the Wildlings, but also give these two characters a purpose moving forward. Finally, to the resurrection scene. It was very kind of Hall of Faces, wasn't it? Very uh, kind of uh, Arya, the way that they were yeah. sort of cleaning this body for ages. Mm. That is gorgeous hair. Oh. I know. Yeah, I she. didn't know that that was part of the ritual. Apparently you have to cut the hair and wash the hair as well. It was like a nice sort of um, spa day for Jon Snow. <laughs> she said, oh, I've got more hot glaze on. Did you know, is that what she actually said? I'm mean, High Valyrian isn't great. But she said something about from darkness, light, from ashes, fire, from death. Like, it didn't, didn't work. work. And the way that this tension was built with the music really sort of rising high and you could see her failure sort of taking over her. This was kind of their last hope. They needed hope from somewhere and this was it. And it looked like it wasn't going to happen and all the music dies down. Everyone and leaves. You're looking at his face and, and, no, and then you're looking at a ghost and there's just, there's just this long nothingness. And the great moment is where... Ghost ghosts Everybody who slumped on the sofa was kind of like... The whole scene was just perfect. It, 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 you know, it took you really high up, it took you way down to the bottom and then it gave you that little bit of hope. All of a sudden it's like, it reaches for air and it made you jump, but at the same time it made you sort of jump for joy. It was just... We're so sad, aren't we? We're fucking losers. <laughs> it was a real sort of fist pump moment. And you don't get a lot of those in Game of Thrones. Next episode I'm going to have to have a sort of, you know, a fist sort of pump in my face to kind of make up for the... You know, it's the joy. It's very rare, do you feel, yeah. at the end of the Game of Thrones episode, that you feel that much joy. Yeah. I'm super looking forward to next episode. There is just so much that's got to go on. No one has seen him get up yet. Makes you wonder if he'll be half or less of a person, though, doesn't it? And what his motivations are going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he can't be part of the Night's Watch anymore. He's been betrayed by his own men. Yeah. There's just going to flip the plot upside down. Sansa arrives at Castle Black. You oh, know. my God. The whole Incredible. episode was brilliant. Obviously, the ending was fucking good which was really compelling TV and that's why we watched this and it's nice to have a little bit of hope in Game of Thrones. I'm sure it'll be flipped upside down next week though to a massive pile of shit. That's about it. Thanks for watching. No, don't then. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching this week's uh, review. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching this week's No, do it again. Thanks very much for watching this week's review of Home, uh, Season 6, Episode 2. Join us next time, and if you like what we do, like and subscribe, and leave a comment, and we'll, we'll have a chat about your thoughts and our thoughts, and yeah, that's wicked. Peace!